How's it going, everybody? I got a message from Ray Novak here. He was going to be in my neck of the woods at the NMEA show. Yes. Right. What is that? National Marine Electronics Association. Here in Anaheim. Yes. Electronics for boats. ICOM's obviously here because you are the lead marketing director for Naval Mar Marine Radio. Yes, sir. Right. So I know nothing about marine radio other than it's a radio. But it's VHF. Okay. So it's 156 megahertz range, so you're okay. very familiar with what all you can do with that. Indeed, indeed, yeah. Uh, we also have marine single sideband. Okay. Ha ham speak, that's HF. Right. So, uh, I mean, a lot of it's just the same. I saw Gordon and Susie through here earlier yesterday. Oh, sure, because they're very active in marine yep. radio. Well, uh, one of the things Gordon does is he's SEC licensed, certified, right, to, to test boats. But he also or, writes for the magazines there, too. Oh, okay. Just like he writes for CQ magazine. Right. He writes for, I think it was Sailing Magazine, is the moniker he was wearing yesterday. So there's some overlap there. Oh, yeah. A lot of hams are also boating enthusiasts, but obviously we're into radio. So uh, about ICOM, the product line, I know nothing about the ICOM product line. So is there, maybe you tell us a little bit about it? And well, what we, you'd start with and I'll, I'll maybe talk to you through the camera here. Well, the, the terminology is a little bit different. We call them handy talkies, HTs. Sure. These are called handhelds. Okay. Lamb Mobile, they call them portables. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, we've I got, assume they all have to be water resistant, right? Is that a, uh, something yes, we can assume? Some, some float. Some float like rocks. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we've got two ruggedized commercial radios on the top here. Yeah. Um, the M85 is very popular for uh, for commercial use because you can program in legally because of the certification both part 90 and part 80. So your marine channels are in it, and then program in your licensed land mobile frequencies. Oh, cool. Okay. Then we have the M73. Sorry, that was the M85. Yeah. Then the M73. We've got the, the regular M73, and then the Plus. The, the Plus offers uh, last heard recording, um, enhancements for noise canceling, things like that. So okay. you're out on a on the deck of a boat, a lot of wind noise. Mm -hmm. The DSP and the radio will filter out the wind noise both on the transmit as well as the receive. Okay. And these are all channelized, I'm guessing. Yes, they are all, all channelized. They're all channelized handhelds. Yes. Uh, quick, or sorry, handy talkies. Which you call handy talkies? No, uh, handhelds. Handhelds. Okay, I was right. Okay. So, quick buttons, all of them have a quick button for channel 16, channel 9, or your call channel. And I'm guessing channel 16 is safety or that, health that and status? Is, that is your um, emergency. emergency channel. Okay, got it. So you've got our three recreational radios, our M25, which is our entry level, okay. our most economical portable. It floats. When it hits the water, It will. the LED will flash to let you see where it is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then we have the M37, which is the next, next level up, but has a higher capacity battery, uh, one watt more out, where we're five watts here, we're six watts here. And uh, what is the power limit upper on a Most of them are five watts. Five watts, okay. Um, a lot of people know that uh, when you're in open waters, you go to five watts. Um, where hams will always run five watts. <laughs> right. Um, when you get into the harbor and you're talking to the harbor master, you go down to one watt. Okay. So that way okay. the battery lasts longer. Sure. Do, do people get on there and squawk, or are they mainly like safety and, and coordinating okay. coming in and out of places? A, a lot of people will just use them as needed. Um, sometimes they'll call for more supplies okay. or coordinating to get in, or in, in some areas where they go through locks. Sure. You got to talk to the talk to the guys that control the locks, so right. you, you communicate. So, those. so truly a logistics tool, yes. primarily. And then we have the M ninety four, which is the industry's first AIS receive portable. Also, okay. AIS is the automatic information system. Oh, okay. So this is a boating term. This, yes, this is okay. a boating term. You or marine term, I should say. You would get a FCC ID for your vessel mm -hmm. or for the portable. Yeah. To program it in, so it it will the FCC has a database tied to that MMSI number, okay. and they can quickly see the phone number, call home. Hey, we received oh. a distress signal. Hey, Do, all right. Was this is this false? Because 
there's so many faults. Is he sitting on the couch watching football right did he, now? Did he accidentally hit the button? Things like right, that. Right, 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 right. So it, it costs a lot to send out a Coast Guard helicopter or a cutter to go right. save. So they, they do some validation of an emergency call first. Right. Makes sense. The unfortunate thing is, and I'm, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but the majority of the DSC alarms that go off do not have an MMSI number and do not have a GPS. So they don't know what size vessel. Oh, sure. So, and there's no identification where it is. Right. All, it's just all they a know beacon. is somebody says, help, I need right. help. They don't know where to go search. Right. So th this is a real good portable for high traffic area. We've got a graphic down here showing in the commercial lanes. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, it's a commercial radio. No, if you're in active commercial lanes, that's these, here in these, Southern California. These vessels have to transmit yeah. their AIS information. Right. You can see it. If you need to call a certain vessel, you can. You see how far away it is. You can then call directly to that ship. Right. Okay. So if you're in distress, hey, I can't get out of your way. My engine's failed. I'm right. here. I'm here. They'll see you on the radar, but you can communicate to them. Good. Okay. Very nice. Then in this section, we have what's called our fixed mounts. and ham radio, we'd call it our mobiles. Oh, okay. Interesting. All right. So we've got the M400BB, which is just a black box radio that goes into a lot of center console boats. Um, so that's the, that's the radio. That's the radio. And connects up to the antenna, all the power. Okay. This, this would be the control mic for it, okay. what we call our command mic series. These command mics, we've got one that will work with the M424G. The G means there's GPS built into it. It will also, for the M510, the M510's got GPS built into it. Is this all the same concept that these are channelized as well? Yes. Okay. okay. All marine radios all are channelized. channelized. Okay. Even if it's single sideband or anything like that, yes. HF doesn't matter. It's well, all channel. Yes, sir. Okay. This is the MA510TR. It's with the M510 family. This is an AIS transponder. Oh, okay. So this transmits the beacon of your MMSI and where you're located, ship name, things like that. I, I'm in my head. I'm thinking like APRS. This is similar to like APRS type the, stuff. Yes. Of, right. Yeah. That okay. that is a very good analogy. Instead of your call sign that the FCC assigns right, you, right. it's an MMSI number. Mm -hmm. For the fixed mounts, it's by boat. Okay. by vessel because it's as the term says it's fixed mounted to the boat okay the portables will have a special MMSI number that will identify it as a portable sure that way when you go from different boats your main comm radio fails mm -hmm. then the portable then becomes your main communications resource okay it will send out the portables MMSI and your location through the, with the GPS built oh, in. Well, yeah, yeah. Then we've got the M605, which is for your more your larger, more luxurious boats. So what, it's bigger, I get that. But it's, what, it's bigger. What, is, what does it do in addition? This is a second station. Okay. Oh, so, oh, so it's... It's identical. So you got a body hidden somewhere, and this is the head unit? Well, the, this, this main unit has the transmitter package in it. The PA module, the heat sink, oh, the, everything. The whole box is in the back. So this is and a, then this is the remote, head unit, a, a remote, remote head, and then we also have a remote mic for it. So what are the big differences between like your 605 and the 400 and the five? Like what's this is obviously a bigger radio. What does it do more of or feature set difference? More of your user interface up front for okay. you. You can punch in directly what channel that you want, and it goes to gotcha. it. Where this one, we use the up down buttons sure. to get to it. Um, here we've got the, the knob to change to it, and we've also incorporated the new four-digit uh, marine channels. Oh, they got more channels recently? No, not more channels, more uh, different numbering schemes. Mm -hmm. I know people will ask as I'm looking at this, how much of the design aesthetic that goes into the user interface for ICOMS radios carries over from things like amateur radio to marine? Because, you know, I'm seeing four buttons, I'm seeing menu items down at the bottom, I'm seeing other things. I mean, is there any kind of connection between the two? There, there are different design crews that, that do these, the different divisions because you have specific 
uh, requirements sure. that the engineers would need to know, like the DSC. One of the requirements for the DSC globally is you have a red emergency button. Okay, okay. So you, instead of being where you can accidentally press it, you have to lift it and then you compress it. Right. And uh, as you can see, that's a common theme for all of them. So are those two of the same right next to each other right here? The 605? Oh, the 803. I see. Okay. This is the 803. So that's that, actually another. This is the single sideband. This oh, is HF. So when you say single sideband, we know that can be just VHF. But in this case, this is HF? For, for ham, yes, it's V. VHF can do it. So I'm seeing 16 megahertz, is that right? right? Okay, interesting. Right. So in the marine industry, when you say single sideband, it's always the MF or HF type of radio. Oh, cool. Here, we've got the body of it. Okay. GPS puck, because GPS goes into it. And this can be remote anywhere. This and, is just And as here, you right? see, there's a DSC button on it as well. Sure, yep. So while you're looking at 25 watts VHF, once you go over the horizon and your antenna disappears over the horizon, VHF right. does no good anymore. Right. So 100, 100 miles offshore, you have an emergency. The Coast Guard can get to you quickly with a helicopter. You can talk locally. I call it, say, MF. We, we'd look at 40 and 80 meters. MF stands for what? Medium frequency Medium versus frequency. high frequency. Okay. So you, you set off the DSC on this, the right. Coast Guard and other vessels will be able to hear that, but on the HF radio, right. this will transmit out your location. From the GPS. As so well you as got your it. MMSI number. Sure, okay. So that that is a very helpful life-saving device right there. Mm -hmm. So there's often, um, there's so many things that go into an amateur radio, right, for audio processing, audio quality. Right. How much of that is similar to marine radio? This this is going to be more automatic. This has got DSP built into it. And if you just you turn can, it on and you go. You can add a modem to it to do what they call sail mail. Oh, so, interesting. So you can do email through it. Is sail mail like Winlink? Con conceptually, conceptually, yes. Some okay. people will use Winlink. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, sail mail is for a lot of the, um, sail uh, sailboat. Blue, what we call blue water sailboating. Sure. We'll use that to be able to keep emails. Uh, did you mention this one? This no, little th this this little guy is the M330. This is our, our entry level radio. Goes on your smaller boats. We've got Go two on a fishing boat or a little thing or no. Well, when you talk about fishing I guess boats, any of them can, right? I mean. There are some very nice center console fishing boats yeah. that... Yeah, um, I have to remember where I'm at, right? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I think it's little dinghies or whatever, you know, a little pontoon yeah, weekend boat. Well, well, this would fit mainly, not mainly, but a lot of trailerables. Okay. This will go on to, so that's less than 25 feet. That's a better way. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking in my head when, when I say fishing boat. I think of a something you're pulling on a trailer. Okay. Yeah, so when, when you're looking at, at what type of, of boat, this would go on one that never leaves the water. Okay, sure. This will go on one that probably, you can, it's going to be towed by a, a, an 18-wheeler semi right. cab, but this is going to be more your center console type boats. Okay. And it's unbelievable. Florida's got them all over the place, and, and you're looking at several million dollars for a center console. They've got a complete flat screen multifunction display. Right. And this is the first one that really looks like it belongs right next yeah, to an it, MFD. I mean, the, these are all really good looking radios. You know, I, I kind of, not, I'm not saying anything bad about this one, but no. this is what I think of when I think of like a marine radio. The, it looks well, this, like this, right? This would be more like your inland waterways, your river. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, we've got two different versions. We've got the M300, mm -hmm. no GPS attached to it. That okay. is the least expensive. Then we have the M330G with the GPS. Mm -hmm. Um, again, you got your DSC window, right. so emergency. But it, it, it's just amazing. Like you, I didn't expect. I didn't expect the the, the way they look. They all look really yeah. good. Like you, you could tell me that that's a, a an amateur radio, and it could like sit in your shack. I mean, minus the emergency distress button and it being channelized. But oh, yeah. it, this looks nicer than you know most GMRS channelized radios or anything like that. Right? These are all really nice. It, this one's really cool. I like that. That that has a real nice look to it. Um, we've got an app that's got wi uh, a wireless LAN system in it. Uh -huh. So you connect your smartphone to the, the wireless LAN system, and we have an app to control it. You can use it for an intercom to go to one of the mics. Oh, or, that's cool. 
So, but sure, you, you could PA just internally. Yeah. I guess if you're big enough, right? If your ship is, if you're talking about a ship and no longer a boat at some point, I guess, right? Then you could use the the two difference, and you can have all these things PA'd together. That's pretty cool. Um, he's he's grabbing something. He's going to demo something. Yeah, you have to appreciate Icom the way they do shows. These are all packable displays, and all the electronics. I peeked in the back. All the electronics you guys have to make this all work is really impressive. So right now, all right. So you got. So you can see the channel. It's in dual watch for channel 16, okay. so I can still monitor that. Okay. You'll see it's seeing dual. Sure. The channel that we're on. This is this radio. Yes. They're connected. So I can come here to the intercom system. Mm -hmm. I can go to that. You see the, oh, yeah. the radio's already showing me. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. So this is a test of the intercom system between my iPhone and the radio. So now oh. the audio is coming out of the remote um, station. That could actually be up on the flybridge of the boat, and that's what you're looking at right there. So this is now out here. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. And you're doing that from your phone. Is this uh, internal Wi-Fi just connection? Yeah. So you could just be the, on a boat. The, the, the microphone is hardwired. Right. Where the connection from the phone is over the wireless LAN system. Mm -hmm. The radio's got it built in, but if you've got something really big, uh -huh. then this can, this can go from being the... Um, can go into the client mode where then it's using your vessel's internet connection. Okay. But you cannot be at home talking right. over the internet. Right, that's what I assume, yeah, okay. So we've danced around, uh, not mentioning the, the huge device right here. So this is now radar we're talking about. Yes. Which I'm guessing is, this, is it connected to this big thing on the on the roof here? It's Well, that's just a hollow dome, but yeah, oh. that would be our, our <laughs> ray dome for the radar. <laughs> a ray dome for the radar, um, right. th this is This is more of a, a specialized small uh, fishing fleet type radar. Okay. It is a standalone. Um, I'll take you to a couple other vendors booths that will sh show you what an MFD looks like. A lot of the the other manufacturers radars interface into an MFD. What is Some an MFD? Multifunction display. Oh, okay. Some of these center consoles, the width of the helm would be two separate MFDs. So you're watching all your your boat information, your motor, RPM, right. voltages and all that. And then you got your your uh, plotter, fish finder, radar, all into one unit right. handling all of that. That's impressive. So this is generally just showing you what this is picking up. Right. Tra We're also traditional, not traditional, but radar. Straight right. up radar. Okay. This is this is showing some of your, your simulation on what you're looking at. Uh, the cursor control, the simulation of a couple of boats, showing their location, their um, oh, cool. course on ground, their speed on ground. Very good. Anything we didn't show? I know we didn't talk about this tuner right here. The tuner? The AT-140 goes along with the M803. Is it pretty much similar guts to other external same, ICOM tuners? Same concept, yeah. but because the Marine single sideband's 150 watts out, oh. this will handle 150 watts. Uh, for sailboaters, they'll use the back mainstay. They'll do an, sure. an, an insulated yeah, yeah, yeah. backstay. Right, it'll be floating. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Very cool. Well, Ray, thanks for... Uh, well, let me... Let me. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me out here to check out some of the booths. This is really cool. I find this fascinating. So thanks again. I appreciate right, it. Thank you, Josh. So for those watching, I did my best with the lighting. Uh, the lighting in here is very, very dark. And all of this just blows it all out. So I, I did my best. I did my best. Yes. All right, what is that? National right. Marine Electric. National Marine Electronics. Na Nash <laughs> it's trying to remember all these acronyms. Oh, I know, man. I know. It throws it, me off. It, National, we'll cut it. 